Hello YouTube and welcome back to this Unreal tutorial series that I'm going to be doing on making a city building game. This episode is going to continue on from the last one. In the last one we made the camera and the movement, which I can just quickly show you. We added some strafing, some rotations, some zooming in and out. Um, and that's fine for now, but I want to make this a bit more advanced, a bit more um, polished for the user. Um, so what I'm going to be doing this episode is I'm going to be changing the movement speed so that it alters depending on what zoom level you are. At the minute you can see that it's always the same speed no matter how zoomed in or out I am. Um, I want to stop it colliding with objects in the world so if I were to just place an actor in right now um, it would collide with that object. Um, so say this is going to be one of our buildings in the future if I hit play and I walk forward I collide into that so I want to stop that happening. Uh, I want to also add in some input to change the pitch of the camera so that I can pitch up and down. And then I also want to incorporate all my movement onto, if I hold the right, if I hold down the right button on my mouse, I can also orbit the camera around. Right now it's all bound to keyboard presses. So I'm going to change that too. Um, so let's start with the movement speed and the zoom. Um, if, assuming you followed on from uh, my initial video, uh, you should probably just check that out if you haven't, just so you can understand what I've got set up here. Um, it's nothing too complex, but uh, it'll be easier to follow on from. Um, so I'm going to start, in the last episode, I, I did a clamp to my camera zoom between 300 and 2000. I'm actually just going to promote these to variables. Um, so I'm going to call that my zoom min. I'm going to add another one, which will be zoom max like so. Um, this is just to get to make this a bit nicer and it also means I can run some logic off of it um, which I will need to kind of understand what um, modifier I need to apply to my movement speed. Um, so I will set my zoom min to be 300 by default and the zoom max to be 2000. So the same values we used before. Compile, save that and then if I go back to main game, press play those are still adhered to. Um, the second thing I need to do for this is I'm going to create another variable and this is going to be my initial movement speed. Um, if you fold on from a video you'll know that I'm using the character movement component um, for my moving around the world uh, and I'm actually using the walking stuff so this initial movement speed is going to be the same as our maximum walk speed in this uh, component. But instead of just copying that value in, a much better way of doing this, if I get, uh, if I call on begin play, I can actually bring down that character movement component and I can get out the maximum walking speed. So if I get the max walk speed on in it, and then that, mean, that makes me free to change the max walk speed in the component and then it'll stay, um, it'll still behave correctly in game. So I'll set the initial movement speed, the variable that we just created, to be the initial max walk, max walk speed and save that. Um, and that's good, that's like all our setup. And what I'm gonna do is add a blueprint function. I'm gonna call this update movement speed and in here what I want to do is I want to figure out how zoomed out I am and then I'm gonna set the movement speed of the character component um, I'm gonna type multiply that by the initial movement speed based on the modifier we created um, so it's quite simple to get the uh, the modifier we want we want to get the spring arm because that's what we're using for the zoom if we pull that off and we get the current uh, target length, uh, get, so get target arm length off that, and if we compare this to our zoom minimum, um, and all we have to do here, really simple, we just need to do a divide. Because if this target arm length, uh, I'm actually going to move that above the zoom minimum. If the target arm length is at the minimum, which would be 300, then if I do 300 divided by 300, then I get a scale of one. Um, so that means we wouldn't actually be changing the movement speed at all, which is exactly what we want. Um, however, if it was at its max of 2000, then oh, we'll see if I can do some quick math here. It would be about 
3.5, maybe 3.3 recurring, the modifier would be. Um, oh no, I've got that wrong. It's 6.6 .6 recurring, I think. Uh, feel free to fact check me in the comments below. Um, but that would be our modifier. And all we need to do now is get our initial movement speed, uh, multiply that by the modifier. And again, sorry, just to make my blueprints a bit neater, I'm just going to move that above, move that here. And that's our modifier, compile that. In fact, I'm just going to comment that so that when I look back at this, I can tell. Uh, calculate modifier, like so. And then grab my character movement and then set um, max walking speed, like so. Drag that in and set that to that. Compile, save that. Then just go back to your event graph. You want to do this on your begin play as well after you've set the initial movement speed. So I'm just gonna call update movement speed because what might happen is, my, for instance, my default uh, spring arm length is um, 2000. So I start way at the max. So I wanna make sure that my movement modifier is already adjusted. So you want to do that on the begin play. And then the other place you want to do it is anytime the camera zoom changes, pull that out, update movement speed, pull, call it there as well. Compile, save that. Let's just check this works if I hit begin play. So moving left to right fairly quickly. Uh, if I zoom in, still moving quite quickly. But you can see now, once when I'm right in, I'm not moving that fast if you watch the squares. And then when I zoom out, the squares are actually moving by quite quickly because I'm so zoomed out. So that's that's quite good. That's what we want. I might fiddle with this a bit more because right now I'm using the character movement. So there's a bit of acceleration in there, whereas I might want to change that to be instant later on. But I can always do that in another video. That will do us for now. Right. The, uh, the second step is the collisions. So as I talked about before, I can walk into this what will be a building in the future. Um, all I really actually want to do for this is just remove collisions on this actor. Uh, we're making a city builder game, so I wouldn't say that um, use, having collisions is necessarily important. We're not running a physics simulation, really. So I'm literally just going to put that as no collision. Save that, press play, and now I can walk through it. Um, the only thing I won't do this with will be my landscape in the future and you know there might be objects that we do want collision on in the future but for now i'm just going to take the collision off everything um, so that was simple enough um, the next thing is i want to add some pitch input um, right now when i press play i can orbit left i can orbit right but i can't pitch up and down so what i'm going to do for that is i'm going to go into my project settings as we've done in the previous video and we're going to add in another axis mapping for um, camera pitch. Um, and then I'm going to put this on R and F, I think. So R, I'm going to pitch up. Um, go down to the, there we go. So that'll be the positive. Um, will that be positive? No, that'll actually be negative. Um, and then I'm going to do the F key to pitch back down. So that will be positive. Um, easy as that. Let's go back to our character and we'll set this up first. Uh, so I'm going to put this next to the camera orbit logic because um, I'm going to use the same orbit speed um, variable for it. So create a new custom event, um, camera pitch. Now, with this, we can't use the controller input because I want to use a clamp for it. So what I'm actually going to do instead is still using this orbit speed. Oh, I need to actually add a parameter for that. Um, I'm going to add, a it's going to be a float and it's going to be the magnitude of our pitch. I have not spelt that very well at all. Magnitude, there we go. Uh, and similarly with above, first thing I'm going to do is just times the orbit speed and the magnitude together to figure out what the actual value we want is. Compile, 
save. Um, and then what we want to do is we want to get, because as I said before, we can't, let me just move these down a little bit. We can't use the controller um, put pitch input for this because I want to have a clamp. Um, once again, I'm going to create two variables and that's going to be the camera min clamp and then the camera max clamp. Uh, compile those and then as defaults the min clamp let's call that uh, let's say it's 310 degrees and the max is 350 and the reason I'm doing it like this is because if you look in my viewport at the spring arm it's rotated 330 degrees and it is up and back from the player looking down at it um, so that's why I've set those to that um, just so we've got some nice variables um, and then to actually set it I'm gonna bring the spring arm down I'm gonna get the current world rotation of it uh, which is a rotator I'm gonna break out that rotator like so and then I'm gonna add the modified thing so just doing a float addition um, I'm going to add the the pitch, I'm going to add the modified um, value to the pitch so we know what to change it by. And then coming off of here, I'm going to do a clamp angle. And then just using the variables we set up, clamp the min and then clamp the max. There we go, That will that will clamp our value nicely um, then I'm going to make another rotator the roll and the yaw are going to be the same as they were when we entered this function but the new pitch is going to be the return value from the clamp now I know this all looks a bit messy this is where I struggle with blueprints having these wires running everywhere but it's the best we can do really we can always go back and neaten it um, but that will do me for now and then just bringing the spring arm back we're gonna set the world rotation of that where the camera pitch has come in I'm gonna drag that through clamp save plug in the new rotation clamp save and I explained this a lot in the last video but I like to use a player controller to do all my inputs um, so what I need to do here is add in the camera uh, pitch axis event. I need to uh, get the controlled pawn like so. Uh, cast it to my camera controller, that which is my custom blueprint. Plug that in. If the cast succeeds, I'm going to do the camera pitch funk, call the camera pitch and plug that axis value in, compile, save that. And now hopefully when I hit play and I do R, I pitch up and I can't pitch any further than that. F, I pitch down and there you go. We've got a nice clamp and it works no matter what direction we're facing, which is good. Okay, right, so that's that done. Um, so that is actually full movement capability that we want. We can zoom in, we can pitch no matter what zoom we're at can move around, rotate, it's actually quite good. Um, I tend to use rotation like left and right and orbiting um, using keyboard, but I also like to use, in city building games, I used to also like to right click and orbit around with my mouse. And this is where using the player controller is gonna come into its own a little bit. Um, I'm gonna go back to the main game. Uh, sorry, I don't need to, but I'm going to. Um, I'm going to go back into the input settings and I'm going to add a new ma uh, axis mapping and I'm just going to call this mouse x and literally all this is is going to be our mouse x input um, I'm going to add so I could don't have to do this but I'm, I'm going to um, I could just oh I didn't mean to do that um, I could just directly call my mouse X and Y, but 
Um, if I do this, it, again, it just allow, makes it very easy in the future um, to add gamepad input. Um, so I uh, will just do the mouse Y as well. Close those down. Bring this, go back to my player controller. Um, and then I'm going to, oh, actually, um, we're going to add in another input, uh, another action mapping, which is the mouse right click. Again, look for your mouse. Um, so right mouse button and you know, this is personal preference. I would advocate doing it on the middle mouse button press as well, but that's entirely user, user choice. Um, go back to here and what we're going to do is um, our action wrapping for the mouse right click. So this is on the press or the release. Um, there's a couple of ways we can do this. I'm going to add a variable called right button pressed. Uh, it's a boolean, compile it. Um, by default, it is off, that's good. Uh, so we're gonna set this here. So when we press it, it's pressed. Um, when we release it, it's, uh, sorry, it's unpressed, compile and save that. And then what we can do is on our uh, input, um, mouse X. So we want both both these axis events for mouse Y and mouse X. We want both of them. Um, so input mouse X. So we've got the X and the Y. Uh, what we're just going to do is we're going to just have a branch um, for both of them and the condition is going to be whether the right button is pressed or not, like so. Drag those in, drag those in. And if our, mouth right, our right button is pressed, um, this is what I'm talking about, about the player control being such a good way of doing this, is we can simply just call the same functions we are for the keyboard presses. So the all these ones up here, camera pitch and um, camera orbit. Um, we're just going to call those exact same functions. So we're going to do the cast again, uh, like so. So if that's true, we're going to cast to the controller. Same down here. If that's true, we're going to go down there. And I can just drag these backwards a little bit. Um, so as that, um, so this is for the mouse X axis. We're going to call the camera orbit. I'm going to plug in the mouse input and then here we're going to call the camera pitch for the Y and we're going to drag in that. Compile, save that, go back to our game. If I hit play now, I'm holding down the right button and I'm moving my mouse and now it is rotating nicely. So now I have full keyboard input, I have full mouse support. It's looking pretty good. This is all a lot better than what it was like when we first started out um, at the beginning of this episode. Um, I hope this was useful for you and let me know if this was a good follow on from the last episode or whether the last episode was enough for you. Um, I'm looking for feedback just as I'm new to this video making business. So um, any feedback at all is muchly appreciated. Um, we'll be moving on to some more interesting gamey stuff next episode. Um, if you have any requests of anything you want me to jump ahead to, then feel free to just drop a comment and let me know. Well, I hope that helped. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.